This is a Buki R300HL rotary evaporator. The purpose of this instrument is to remove unwanted solvents from a sample at lower temperatures and higher pressures than they would normally boil at. The key parts of the rotovap is the heating water bath, the round bottom flask with a solvent collection, the bump trap held together using grease and a cat clip, and a cold finger where solvents go and is used for condensing purposes. Every part of the rotovap is powered by a motor pump. The first thing you will need to do is make sure that the water level is high enough so that when you lower the round bottom flask into the water bath, it sits nicely. This is very important. You don't want the water to be too low and you don't want it to be too high. That water is able to seep into the round bottom flask with your solvent. To turn on the water bath using the switch and rotating the knobs, make sure that you heat the water until it's at your desired temperature. It's very important to understand the type of solvent you are trying to remove before using the rotovap. Certain solvents are more volatile than others and will require less heating or more pressure than others. The more volatile a solvent is, the less heating it will need. If you have a solvent that has a lower boiling point, the water bath can remain at room temperature. However, if you are trying to remove a solvent that has a high boiling point, you may need to increase the temperature and the pressure. Now, you will need to obtain a round bottom flask and add your solvent. Clip your round bottom flask onto the end of the bump trap with a cat clip and lower the arm of the round bottom into the water bath. Make sure it's comfortable and not drowning. Next is to prepare the cold finger. This allows excess solvent to condense after it has evaporated through the bump trap. You will need to make sure you have dry ice and the appropriate solvent such as acetone or isopropanol. If the rotovap was in use before, there will likely be acetone or isopropanol already in the finger. If so, you will just need to add dry ice. There is no set amount of dry ice that you should add. Basically, just add enough so that it's cold. Due to sublimation, the dry ice will aggressively boil, so watch out for intense bubbling and splashing. Once you've confirmed that the finger is cold, either by observing obvious condensing on the outside of the finger or by touching it, you are ready to begin. Start by first turning the vacuum input valve to allow airflow through the tubing from the pump. Next, you will turn the output valve to close the system from the atmosphere. Now, turn the vacuum pump on. Make sure that the bump trap with the attached round bottom flask is rotating. You can adjust the rotation to the desired RPM using the control panel knobs. You can also use these knobs to change the specific pressure of the solvent you are trying to evaporate. As your round bottom flask rotates in the bath, you may notice bubbles form. As this occurs, the solvent is boiling and will begin to condense as it rises up the bump trap and comes into contact with the cold finger, where it will drip down into the collection flask below. Once the solvent has dissipated to the desired amount, reverse the steps you used to turn off the rotovap. Make sure when you rotate the output valve back to its original position, you let the hiss ring out until it stops to allow the pressure in the system to equilibrate with the atmosphere. The round bottom may be difficult to pull off the bump trap, Adding grease to the connections before adding the round bottom flask to the bump trap may help with this. For safety, set the round bottom flask down in a cork donut. Finally, make sure you properly dispose of waste. So you will need to unscrew the clamp that's holding the collection flask in place and dump out any excess solvent into the waste carboy. Secure the flask again and make sure it doesn't fall. Good job, you successfully completed your first rotary evaporator apparatus use. Thanks for watching.